James, what's your message to the fan base? We're coming. We got unfinished business. Holly. Oh my goodness! Welcome <laughs> back, James Booknight! If that doesn't give you chills to start your college hoop Saturday, I don't know what will. James Booknight, the Yukon Husky sophomore star, will join me for an exclusive one on one coming up here on Big E Shoot Around. Happy Saturday, everybody. John Fanta here with you. Also coming up on the show, we've got the Georgetown senior duo of Jamarco Pickett and Javon Blair to talk about the Hoyas' recent play. They've won three of their last five. They take that momentum into one today with Seton Hall, 5.30 Eastern time from D.C. inside McDonough Arena. Let's start out with the Big East Hoops headlines. Number one, the Johnnies keep on surging. St. John's has won seven of their last eight games. The Red Storm in action tonight. They need this one inside the top 70 of the net rankings. The Johnnies will host DePaul, 7.30 Eastern on FS1. What was the key to the win over Xavier? Mike Anderson's 400th career head coaching victory. Balance. The Johnnies had five in double figures. Julian Champagny, the top scorer in the Big East, is performing like an all-Big East first-team selection. And Posh Alexander continues to be the frontrunner for Big East freshman of the year. He had 15 points, 9 assists, 8 rebounds. On the other side of that matchup, you have a senior in Paul Scruggs who has done anything and everything for Travis Steele's program throughout his career. So that stands out to me about a freshman, Alexander, who plays fearlessly and is the head of the snake for this program. The Red Storm are rolling at the perfect time of year. Number two, Seton Hall has won four in a row. Can the Pirates keep this going at Georgetown? The Hall beating DePaul earlier this week in a bit of an ugly game. And for Seton Hall, yes, they've been consistent. They've actually been 10-1 against teams not named Villanova and Creighton in the Big East this year. For the Pirates, they need their offense to get going again. Just 60 points against the Blue Demons, just 57 points against Marquette, and against a Georgetown team that can score the basketball well. This will be an interesting test for the Pirates in D.C. They dominated Georgetown back in December, but this Hoyas team is different. I think for Seton Hall, the key is two things. They need Jared Roden and Miles Kale to keep hitting shots. And that's got to come from point guard play, which has been a little bit wishy-washy lately. And then I think it's important for Ike Obiagu going up against Kudus Wahab, which big performs better in a matchup of towers downstairs. Finally, number three, on Fox, 1 Eastern time, Villanova hosting UConn. It's a battle of the standards in the Big East. Villanova's been the new standard in this reconfigured conference, not just in the league, but nationally. Two of the last four national championships belonging to the Cats. They've won three straight Big East tournaments. They've had a week to think about a loss at Creighton last Saturday in which they got commanded. What am I looking for today against UConn? Villanova's offense against the Huskies' defense. Villanova wants to spread you out. They average 79 points per game. They have three-point shooters aplenty. Colin Gillespie's the game manager. On the flip side, UConn wants to grind you down. They're only allowing 65 points per game. They're an elite rebounding team, and Villanova on the defensive glass is huge in this game. Physicality versus spacing. The Cats show they can win games in varieties of ways. I'm really intrigued to see what Jay Wright and Dan Hurley do in what should be a coach's chess match, as Gus and Raph will have the call coming up 1 Eastern time over on Fox. Let's learn a little bit more about one of the star guards in all of college hoops the Yukon Huskies leader, James Booknight. In your return, just over seven minutes into the game, you just ignite Gamble Pavilion with that putback jam. What were you thinking on that sequence? Oh man, when I got something in the game, I was just thinking like, go out there, play hard, and, and try to have an impact on the game anyway, defense, defensively or offensively. And then I saw Ty had missed the three, and I just like, took advantage of the opportunity and it just happened to turn into a highlight. How many times have you seen that clip? <laughs> I watched it a couple times. <laughs> uh, I, I would, too. I've watched it more than a couple times, too. It was awfully impressive. As each game passes that you're out in, everybody's wondering, when is he coming back? When is he coming back? But, James, I think sometimes the outsider doesn't understand what you are going through. Can you take us inside, whether it be your dorm room or just 
whether it be those phone calls, those conversations, of that process. And how, as a player, you navigate that process. Well, well, being injured is, like, one of the most frustrating things. Like, there, there were days during the whole process where I was, like, at my worst. Like, I, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I would just, like, sit in my room with the lights off. But just, just like, the culture here at UConn, it's, like, my teammates, the staff, they just stuck by me, stuck by my side the, the whole time, like, from day one to day 43, just all the way up to game time. They just told me to stay with it. And, and my time's going to come, and when it comes, I'm going to be ready for it. And my, my strength coach always says, uh, just stay ready so you don't got to get ready. So that's what I did. What is happening right now at UConn? Um, <laughs> As that a lot like we're, like we're just ch changing the program around like three years ago four years ago like th this program wasn't like really much to talk about but we're just trying to bring it back to the top like like coach Hurley always says like just always competing in relentless effort all, all the little things we got to do to just be great again and we're doing it right now a big east rivalry gets renewed saturday one o'clock on fox it's yukon it's villanova from philly what do you make of this showdown? It's game day. We coming. It's game day. We coming. I'm curious as well. Villanova's been the class of the Big East. You know where they stand in college basketball. Mm -hmm. Just how much respect do you have for what they've been able to do? And, and what kind of a stage do you think this is for you and the rest of your team to try to take advantage and make a statement? Um, well, co coach always tells us to have a, a respectful fear of our opponent. Uh, we know we know that Nova is like the like the, the one of the most winningest programs in college basketball, and, and it's not going to be an easy game. But but we know what we have on our mind and the goals we have, and we know that coming up with a win on Saturday that that's just going to show the nation that we're serious about what we're trying to do. What are your thoughts on Colin Gillespie, their point guard? Uh, he's a tough guard, a veteran guard. He's been a lot, around a lot of winning. Uh, he's a great leader. Props to him, but, but we're coming, like I said. You're in the American last year. You come into the Big East this season. We talked about that Big East tournament. Uh, and, and it's not as if you've played a lot of Big East games due to that injury. I'm just curious, though, in the Big East, how would you describe life in this conference? Every game is a war. Uh, every game. It, it, from, from the bottom of the conference to the top, every game is a war. Like, like you, you have a chance to lose every game if you if you go in and just lack the days and, and and not prepare for the game, not ready to play. It, it's just gonna be a battle every night. So you got to be ready in this league. James Book Knight, what is your why? Why do you love basketball? I, I just I love winning. I love family. And just, just like what it could do for me and the positions it could put me in, the people I've met. i met so many people at UConn. It's just like, just, that's why I changed my life. There's always a time in somebody's career where maybe you got doubted, maybe somebody talked a certain way, or you thought, I've been counted out. Can you tell me about one of those moments? <laughs> um, uh, when, when I was a junior, I had to my meniscus. And a lot of schools stopped recruiting me. Um, a lot of coaches stopped calling me. A lot of people said I was going to be a bust, so I wanted to come back the same player. Um, but Coach Charlie and the rest of the staff here, they stuck with me, and it paid off. How much does the belief that they have in you inspire belief for you in them? Oh, I, I, I have like the utmost respect for my coaches. Uh, any, everything and everything they have to say. Uh, whatever they tell me, I listen and I, I soak it in because they've been around this game much longer than me. And they, they, they know it better than me. So well, what they have to say is always the like, most important thing to me. All right, rapid fire time. Your favorite meal? Favorite meal? Uh, steak and mashed potatoes. That's good. That's hearty. That's home cooked. That's good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, what I'm talking. that's blue collar meal right there. That's a great way to start this out. All right, three artists or songs that you're listening to pregame. Uh, Lil Dirt, Lil Baby, and uh, Gunna. 
it, yeah. it, it's going to change, though. Like, that, those, those are just, like, the three that came to my mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Little Baby's been a leader in the clubhouse from all Big East players throughout this season. Uh, have you had any hot sauce this season? I've I had any hot sauce. Yeah, I did the challenge. I did it. <laughs> what do you think of all that? I'm going to post the video. Oh, no, it's actually amazing, like, like the amount of money we've been able to raise and, and just to show, like, the support of our fan base. It's amazing. James, what's your message to the fan base? We're coming. We got unfinished business. Today, UConn battles Villanova in a Big East blockbuster on Fox. As the wild regular season races to the finish. Watch out! How about that? The Beast of the East, 10th ranked Nova, look to march into the tournament on a high when Colin Gillespie and the Wildcats to go. take on the Huskies. Take that! UConn Villanova, today at 12.30 Eastern, sponsored by Jeep on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Welcome back to Big East Shoot Around, everybody. I'm John Fanta from the Hoboken, New Jersey, at home studio. And now for the best thing that we've seen in the last week, the Go for Gold campaign at Marquette in honor of the volleyball senior student athlete, Sarah Rose, who currently is battling bone cancer. Sarah in Chicago with her family. She's been undergoing treatment, and we can report that her tumor, it has shrunk, and the treatment has seemingly been going well. Sarah, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And for Marquette this week, they are making efforts to go for gold for Sarah with funds, proceeds going to pediatric cancer in Milwaukee. They've already raised over $4,000. And this week, Marquette men's basketball wearing gold at Hinkle Fieldhouse, getting a win as well, and honoring the senior volleyball star for a great Golden Eagles program, a true family, Sarah Rose. To you, Sarah. You're an inspiration and an incredible fighter. Our thoughts and continued prayers are with you. And to Marquette Athletics, what a job done to honor a Golden Eagle. Turning back to the hardwood, let's talk Georgetown basketball. The Hoyas were picked to finish at the bottom of the Big East preseason poll. They started conference play 1-5. They go to Syracuse and take a loss on January 9th, and then they go on a COVID-19 pause. So it was looking bleak for Georgetown. It could have been easy for these players to quit. But they've won three of their last five games. They're now 4-7 and seven in the league. Home dates with Seton Hall and UConn coming up. What has shifted? It starts with seniors. Javon Blair playing like an alpha type of guard. Jamarco Pickett trying to will his team on the rebounding and defensive front. I got a chance to catch up with both those Hoya seniors. Talk about their time at Georgetown and more this week. Over these past few weeks in the Big East, the Georgetown Hoyas have been clicking. They've won three of five. They've been in every game. And now the Hoyas are looking to keep that rolling. That's behind their senior duo of Javon Blair and Jamarco Pickett. We're joined by them now on Big East Shoot Around as two guys who were part of Coach Ewing's first recruiting class at Georgetown. I'll start with you, Javon. What have you learned from your head coach throughout your career? I learned a lot. I mean, like Coach Pat, he's a Hall of Famer. So he just gives us bits and pieces, you know, telling me how to stay in shape, how to eat properly for my diet, how to be a pro, how to stay ready in the classroom, just everything. Just He's just a wonderful coach, and I'm blessed to be able to be coached by him. So he taught me, he taught me a lot, honestly. So, Javon, for you guys as a group, you, you said it with, Judy and Kudis Wahab and even Dante Harris. It's been a, a flurry of different guys who've stepped up on top of what you two have done. What can you say about the unselfishness of this group? Yeah, everyone's happy for everybody. I mean, no one's being selfish. No one's playing selfish. And I think that's what's making us win, too. Everyone's just playing as a team. And Coach really stresses that, too. You know, if we play as a team, everyone will be happy so everyone's just playing good I'm happy for everybody too. DeMarco how would you describe as someone who's been through this now for a fourth time life 
playing in the Big East? Uh, it's definitely rough. Uh, get a little chippy at times. Uh, the last game, me and Javon got a tech. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely rough. Definitely not the easiest. Uh, you gonna be in the bottom every single night. Don't you sometimes need to get chippy though to be able to pull out games? Oh yeah, you definitely gotta have that dog mentality. I think that would, that that's what will separate you from the group. All right, who wins in a game of one on one between you two? Oh me. Don't. Be too small. Let me answer that first. Me. For He's sure. too small. I'm gonna shoot the. It's okay. I'm gonna let him take that. Down. Yeah, I mean, how do you overcome his size, Javon? What do you mean? Just get up, be a dog, be physical. He's not gonna post me up. Now there's still games ahead here. You got Seton Hall this upcoming weekend. You've got UConn then at McDonough before going to DePaul. As the season continues to intensify here, you've got the four conference wins. You've won three of five. So Javon, what is the vibe right now inside the locker room? It's a really good vibe. I mean, everyone's happy, and we just gotta. Just honestly, just take it game by game, you know, do the same thing, co stress about, play, don't play selfish, move the ball, and just have fun and just be dogs out there. So we take that into every game. Jamarco, how many times do you think you've heard Coach Ewing say rebound? God, I don't even think I can count. <laughs> uh, countless. Um, the, the rebounding has definitely been, you know, a uh, problem for me since I've been here, especially being so tall. But luckily, I figured it out now. The Hoya faithful out there, I know, want to be at these games like a lot of these fan bases across the country. So as as things here inch closer and closer to March, you guys are starting to make a bit of a move. Jamarco, what would be your message to all those Hoya fans who are at home still watching? Uh, we definitely see and we appreciate you guys' support um, coming from, you know, watching it on the social media pages. Uh, we definitely see it and we definitely appreciate you guys. So thank you. Javon, what's your message to the fans? Thank you. Keep on cheering for us. Keep supporting. Uh, hold it for life. That's all I got to say. And then finally, guys, there's that word, legacy. You know, when you, when you step into somewhere, you always want to – leave it better off than when you first came in. Javon, how do you want to be remembered as a Georgetown Hoya? As one of the best to ever come here and, and to be able to, one of the best players to ever be coached by Coach Pat. That's what I want to leave on my table, so. Jamarco? Um, just a stand-up guy, um, responsible, um, and he just took care of business. Well, you guys have been doing just that and did it against Butler this past weekend at home. And now the Pirates of Seton Hall are next this upcoming weekend. Jamarco, Javon, thanks for taking the time. Congratulations on what you've been able to do throughout your careers. And, hey, basketball, a degree at Georgetown University, and a future in hoops and beyond. It's really special, guys. Thanks again, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's time to get you involved. We asked you this week on at Big East MBB on Twitter, who would be your lead candidate for Big East Coach of the Year? And the replies were pretty much a consensus. The man in Queens, Mike Anderson, who's coming off his 400th career head coaching win. And his Johnnies have gone from 2-5 and five in the Big East to now 8-7. and seven. What an impressive turnaround by Anderson to get this program to this point in just his second year. He's been known for turnarounds. He's done it in Queens. Now can he keep this rolling here? You guys on Twitter, it's clear who you think the Big East Coach of the Year is from being picked ninth to being in fifth right now as we take a look at the Big East standings. And Anderson right now would have his Johnnies against UConn in a 4-5 quarterfinal game inside Madison Square Garden. It makes you want a full house at MSG. Obviously this year uh, at MSG will be very different with the pandemic ongoing, but the setup is there in this league right now. Villanova, 8-2 and two in the Big East at the top. Creighton, two back in the loss column, but they own a win over the Wildcats. The two are scheduled to meet here soon in Philly, and if you're the Blue Jays, you're rooting for UConn to try to pull it off against the Cats today. Seton Hall showing they're the third best team in this league right now, 10-5, and, and 
They have mostly controlled everybody with the exception of those two teams at the top. And in the back half of this league, Providence at 7-9. and nine. Marquette and Butler have some things to figure out there. We'll see about Xavier. Xavier is, no pun intended, the X factor to this league at 4-4. Four and four. They're getting a little bit murky right now. And they need to win tomorrow night, 7 Eastern Time FS1, when the Musketeers will be taking on Butler. That is a very, very big game. As we take a look at the schedule, to wrap things up, you've got the big one coming up, 1 Eastern Time on Fox, Villanova, UConn. No other words are really needed for that matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun as Book Knight and Gillespie square off for the first time this year. Seton Hall, Georgetown should be interesting. Hoyas have been playing better. Pirates have been a little bit off, but they've been a very, very good road team. We'll see if that translates. And then in the nightcap, DePaul paying a visit to St. John's. And the Blue Demons fought hard in New Jersey against Seton Hall. We'll see if they bring that fight to Cardaseca Arena. Enjoy your college hoop Saturday, everybody. Get to Fox for the Saturday pregame show. 12.30 Eastern time here ahead of Villanova and UConn in what should be a heavyweight clash in the Big East. That's all for us here on Shoot Around. I'm John Panza.